Welcome to Founder Stories. I'm Mike Abbott, and today with me is Eric Frankil from MemSQL. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Good to meet you. So before we kick off with the questions, uh, tell us a little bit about MemSQL. Sure. Um, so uh, MemSQL is a company uh, founded in 2011 going through IC. It's uh, a database that's built for real-time analytics. So winter 2011, YC, yep. 14, 14 folks. How many are engineers? Uh, nine engineers today. Uh, okay. When we got started, it was just myself, my co-founder Nikita, and uh, a dog. So, right. Dogs always are really important. Very important. Very important. So you're like almost two years now later, not, not yep. quite. Um, and like looking back on your YC experience, what, what things like really stuck out? What things did you kind of wish that maybe you had more out of YC or yeah. not? Um, so going through YC, I think, is a great um, experience for a, a variety of different types of startups. Um, going into YC as an enterprise-focused startup at the time was very unusual. Um, and I think it gave us a lot of sort of uh, you know, perspective and insight to what we would have to do post-YC. Um, so you know, a lot of the, the focus on you know, building virality, um, you know, viral loops just weren't that relevant for us. Um, but what we did see, of course, was a great team of you know, fellow founders mm -hmm. And uh, it was fundamentally there for a lot of the advice from PG and the other partners. Um, the dinners were, were awesome, you know, the speakers. So I think um, any company, whether it's enterprise or consumer going through IC, gets a lot of value. Um, for us, we were a bit of a black sheep going through it, but um, you know, more enterprise companies have been founded through IC now. Mm -hmm. And uh, having started an enterprise company myself, um, especially as, as an engineer than the CEO, one of the challenges is getting those first customers because it's not like there's a manual on how to right. go sell customers. Tell us a little bit about your experience getting those first customers from MemSQL. Yeah. Um, so I, w what's kind of, I think, nice to anchor is that when YC, when you join YC, you get a t-shirt. And it, it boils down to a phrase on the, fr on the back that says, make something people want, um, which really boils down to why consumer startups exist. Um, I think the parallel will be something, make something companies want or make something companies need. Um, and you know, the first thing that we did when, upon you know, founding the company was very quickly identify um, a, an immediate use case that we could attack and, uh, and solve. And that was something that helped us tremendously as we went into Demo Day. Um, there was a, a sister company in our batch that was growing, growing tremendously fast, like uh, zero to 20 million page views in six weeks. And they used a little bit of our early parts of our technology to scale. Um, so that was great hmm. validation. More, more proof of execution than proof of concept, but um, it was, I think, a great sort of validator. Um, the other thing that we did uh, early on was we booked our first revenue about eight months after founding the company. And that's extremely, extremely fast for an enterprise infrastructure that's startup. Right. Yeah. Um, and that was done primarily to start you know, uh, testing um, and stressing sort of the engineering team to make sure that what we were building actually was the right feature set. Mm -hmm. And through that engagement, we actually discovered a vast um, sort of variety of features that we, we wanted to include for a later release. So even though that we just formally launched the company just a few months ago in June of 2012, uh, we had already been in production for a number of months um, and refining and iterating and basically making sure that what we did launch was bulletproof. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges when you build an enterprise product is you get those first couple of customers. One customer wants feature X and next cu customer wants feature Y. Mm -hmm. And they all kind of want it then. How do you, have you been managing those features with your product roadmap? So, um, you know, fundamentally, if we start, uh, we start selling ahead. You know, mm -hmm. we, we very much uh, enjoy testing out um, early prototypes of uh, whether uh, parts of the system. If we notice um, a common sort of, you know, uh, string, if you will, throughout um, these early engagements, it does prioritize that feature for us. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've done it before where, you know, we basically had a, a feature that was lower pry, but after seeing sort of the use cases sort of mater uh, materialize, uh, mm -hmm. we prioritize it higher. Um, and I think it's a parallel with, again, a consumer startup where it's very easy to A-B test and launch a feature very quickly. With an enterprise company, you only got one shot really to get the, the actual release right. Mm -hmm. um, so that entails a lot of uh, early work with customers, um, mm -hmm. an early access program, a, a private beta program. Um, all of those have been very helpful for us just to make sure that what we do go GA with is actually mm -hmm. the right sort of software. And the other kind of challenge can be when you have 14 folks and nine are engineers right. and you've got your product in the field that right. engineers can be doing a lot of the field work. Oh, yeah. And so, I, th I think it's tell necessary. me a little bit more about how, like, how you structure that in MemSQL, and how do you ensure that 
bugs are being addressed, but at the same time you're advancing against your prioritized right. product roadmap. Um, so I think it's very important that um, any small engineering team that's focused on the enterprise be able to talk and interact with their customers. Mm -hmm. um, it, nothing makes a problem more immediate if the engineer himself experiences it or vicariously understands exactly what's happening. Um, so all our early engagements, we would have engineers on the ground, you know, boots on the ground, if you will, basically working with our early customers, making sure that they would see, you know, how the interaction was going. So that really uh, speaks more to fit and finish, you know, uh, the polish of the product. But adding, you know, more commands that just make the, e the product easier to use um, is very important, you know. So um, I firmly believe that engineers should be, you know, engaged with customers. And there are some that really enjoy that and they kind of mm -hmm. are more of a forward deployed engineer, it just speaks to their, their personality. Um, but any team, I believe, actually has to have that, that, that sort of um, cross-functional, if you will, um, team member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saw a very similar thing at Composite Software. And in terms of some engineers really gravitated to wanting to be with those customers, right. and, which is really helpful oh, it's great. to bring that kind of data back. Right. As you imagine in the future growing, even from you know, just the small group of engineers, right. you've got a couple folks in product marketing, mm -hmm. how do you imagine like product uh, we'll say definition evolve, especially with these customers. And right, you're going to get bigger, big enough where not engineers are not necessarily always going to be in the field. True. Um, you know, generally, um, you want to augment at that point with some, you know, some early sales engineering work. Um, it speaks more to the fact that you know, at, at a core level, our product. Um, does latch on to a lot of existing systems. So there is a fair amount mm -hmm. of, of integration. But once you have that, you, you really see the performance um, and the benefits. Um, but you know, scaling an engineering team, um, I think, you know, is, is you know, sort of our top priority early on. And then as we scale out on the, the pro serve side, if you will, the professional mm -hmm. services side, that's when you can start bringing on you know, some of the, mm -hmm. the sort of the sales consultants, mm -hmm. engineers, and the like. What's been uh, one or two surprises that, that you had having building a, an enterprise right. Uh, startup? Right. Um, I guess uh, you know, uh, sort of the, the sort of the pace is is uh, a little bit you know slower compared to the consumer startups of our class. Um, we're, we still feel we're just 1% there. I mean, we're mm -hmm. two years in, we have some great um, customers deployed on hundreds of machines uh, on some of the larger ones, um, and we still feel that we're just getting ready to start you know, ramping, right? Mm -hmm. um, it takes time to bake good software. Um, and you know, my sort of personality lends itself to you know, sprints. I love, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a high energy, uh, mm -hmm. more of a type A kind of, kind of person, and getting used to sort of those long sales cycles, for example, is just something that is part of the business now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, def definitely understand that. Now, w one of the things that we were talking about before we, we started the show was just around internal tools. Mm -hmm. And um, talking about the fact that usually at about 15, 20, you know, kind of different aspects of that company at that stage kind of drive a need for tools. Right. Where, where are you guys at on your tool side? Um, so we have a, a, a great set of tools. Um, it's, it's basically, I think, um, sort of a phrase from Facebook that only sort of applies. And, and Facebook's motto, and you see it everywhere you go, uh, being a Facebook, uh, former Facebook employee, is move fast and break things. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly do that on an application tier, a web app, you can roll it back release it to just a certain fraction of the audience, um, but you really can't break things with someone's data. Um, mm -hmm. A database is sort of the most trusted uh, you know, part of the, t of the stack and needs to be secure, needs to be consistent and mm -hmm. durable. Um, so we had to balance sort of the need as a startup to move fast, and I think we have, with the need to move fast but not break. Um, not break things. Mm -hmm. um, so one of our, our sort of promises to, to our, our, own, our own selves, our team, was to guarantee um, easy testing. So if, if you could guarantee that the SLA on any sort of test would be X, and you could always deliver that by cloud bursting, it makes testing um, an actual pleasant experience. So even though our engineering team is quite small um, and we all QA our own, our own work, basically we've invested about $50,000 into our own hardware internally um, that run you know, performance mm -hmm. tests, regression tests, re correctness tests, just so that we know any minor change in the system um, and how it will affect um, you know, future, future builds. Um, so we built um, a tool called Psyduck. It was named by one of our you know, uh, engineers, and it's basically a way to deploy thousands of tests being executed against that particular build of MemSQL, um, and then get a quick answer back. Um, and we do that now by using the cloud to burst when we need to, because essentially you have nine engineers basically hitting that system. It's about uh, 15 um, servers now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, basically a couple hundred cores all working to kind of solve these, mm. these tests. Um, so basically, we've achieved, I think, you know, great software by always insisting that engineers test and making sure that it's pleasant uh, to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a key, yeah. key attribute, pleasant. It has to be. It hasn't always it, been the it, case. I mean, it's like going to the dentist. If, yeah. you, if, you, you know, if 
if you don't have a, a pleasant experience, you don't want to go back. And how often are you thinking through um, kind of applying patches or updates to the stuff um, we have in the show? So we, we, we have a, a, you know, a definitive sort of you know, schedule of shipping software, whether it's a minor release or a major release, every three to four months. Mm -hmm. um, but internally, we are always obviously having a different branches of the, of the software that we, again, that we test and experiment with. Mm -hmm. So that what we do ship actually has the core set of features that we want to deliver on. Mm -hmm. Now, a number of these early customers, coming back to that, uh, you got through YC. Mm. Um, as you look beyond YC, what have you what have you found working and not working to find new customers? Right, especially as an engineer, because it's not like there's a manual on this. Right. Um, so I mean, we launched, you know, uh, in June of 2012. We were effectively stealth for for mm -hmm. you know from January to then. Um, for us, it was essentially giving away great software. So you can go to our website and download um, MemSQL with 32 gigabytes of capacity for free and use it forever. Um, that created a, a, great, a great pipeline um, for future conversations with engineers, typically from large companies. Um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. some large names from the Fortune 500 that actually just downloaded the software, saw the value, and said, "Well, it runs on one machine. Does it run on more?" Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're getting ready to actually do a GA with with MemSQL Distributed, um, mm -hmm. and that's currently what's in production with some of our, our you know valued customers like Zynga. And uh, you know, uh, when we go GA, you know, we'll we'll be able to bring. Um, a lot more storage, a lot more compute uh, to uh, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just thinking about hiring. I mean, you're at 14. Uh, you're you're starting to add some of the non-engineers. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about like what you're what you've learned that works or not works as you're hiring non-engineers. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we just went through this exercise. Right? We've hired you know, no less than four uh, employees in January of this month. We got a new mm -hmm. office. We're starting mm -hmm. to scale. And um, some of those folks are, are non-engineering non hires. Um, and we principally look for um, expertise in the space. Have they done this something similar? Mm -hmm. um, do they have essentially the ability to execute quickly? Um, and then we've decided to basically start teams in pairs. Um, hmm. The notion around that is, you know, starting a company by yourself is really hard, and so is spinning up a new org internal to that company can be very difficult. So, by pairing off, you know, two marketers, for example, with each other as a as a, as a duo of sorts, um, it, it fosters, I think, collaboration and you know, uh, ideation. Um, the ability not to have to have, you know, someone who might not be an expert in marketing uh, have to contribute but maybe act as a participant, in which case that'd probably be me. Mm -hmm. um, having marketers that have done this before, have that database experience, have uh, mm -hmm. enterprise marketing experience, I think it creates, I think, a lot of, um, I think it's a, it's a force multiplier. Yeah. It's not just It's a really people. interesting idea of having a pair. Mm -hmm. um, how do you break ties? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I think that at this stage, you know, the notion of having to break a tie um, is, it shouldn't have to come up as so much. We, mm -hmm. we do like to think that, um, you know, we have um, you know s uh, strong opinions weekly held, mm -hmm. and that gives us the ability to you know pivot mm -hmm. or change our ideas about how we want to pursue something. But um, eventually, I suppose you know, uh, adding that to that team, yeah. it'll solve itself. Yeah. That's and and you're the CEO, so you're sure. the ultimate kind of tiebreaker. Well, uh, only when I need to be. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, Worst I'm, case, that's the failure mode. I'm just there to support and make sure everyone's yeah. working on the right stuff. That's great. Now, at 14 people, oftentimes you kind of reach 20. Mm -hmm. You start. People may start joining the company for a little bit of a different reason mm -hmm. than someone who joins a, a ten-person company. Right, right. I, how are you taking that kind of known fact or belief and altering your recruiting or hiring process? It's, yeah. Um, so uh, I, you know, again, coming from from Facebook, which has a great culture, um, it has uh, amazing sort of uh, sort of perks. We have that in, in a small sort of, um, you know. Uh, Universe with MemSQL, mm -hmm. we have a full site, a full on-site chef full time, but he only cooks um, breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. um, dinner should be with the family, and as we move into a bigger space, it mm -hmm. just makes sense that it makes more relevance for us, at least, for everyone to start a little earlier, maybe around 9:30 instead of the conventional 11 or 11:30 that most engineers <laughs> enjoy. Um, so we do we do breakfast and lunch, and then by the evening, you know, people will either you know bounce because they have a family, or you know grab drinks or you know. And get back to the office and you know push more code. Hmm. Um, so you know it's I think transitioning away from that little tiny sort of close knit ten person team mm -hmm. to a team that's uh, has to scale has to grow to twenty to thirty to, to fifty. Um, you just have to have a culture that evolves with it. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working on that, and I think yeah. we're doing pretty good so far. That's fantastic. Well, Eric, thank you so much for coming today on Founder Stories. My pleasure. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.